My name is Paul Graham. I'm from Matrix Software, Director of UK Engineering. Um, we're a Silicon Valley-based online charging company, heavily involved in cloud native and 5G. It's great to be here. The presentation so far has been excellent, lots of useful information, and I'm pleased to say my presentation exactly lines up with what's already been said, and I feel this is a great way of ending the day because I will be emphasizing some of the points that's already been said. So the agenda will be the goals we set out when we came, created our CNFs, the experience, telco requirements, our involvement with the test suite, and then lessons learned. So our original goal when creating the CNFs was we're taking a 4G online charging and putting it into the, the strange new world of 5G and cloud native. Um, that involved implementing the 5G REST SBA, as always already been highlighted, containerizing the services, and then moving it to a fully compliant cloud native network functions. As we've already heard today, this is challenging. There's issues that come up along the way, and that's what I'll be discussing today. So our experience was, first of all, assimilating the existing online charging. And I'll show the diagram later of how we took the components, what we know were bare metal, RPM installs, and put them into containers and then into Kubernetes to make it 5G. So it's what you know is a 4G monolith on bare metal, that the boxes in VMs, as discussed earlier. We then involved in multiple trials and installations, so companies like Dish in, in the US, with a 5G, um, at and Mexico, Telstra, TPG in Australia, Big Globe, and Swisscom, to name but a few. A um, lot of experience there. So we are a vendor. We have to work what the operators want. So we have had to work in all sorts of Google Cloud, Azure, AWS, OpenShift. We have experience of working everything. And this is a constant learning experience and a constant improvement. And what I've done in this presentation is really highlighted some of the pain points, some of the learning exercises, and what we need to do in the future to keep moving along. And I say, I particularly liked some of the earlier presentations from Joshua and Michael because it really emphasizes these points, and we're right in there. So where are we as a charging company? Business, well, this is the 5G network architecture, as we all know and seen before, the user plane, control plane, and we are what is known as a CHF, but it's much more to than that. Um, working with the SMF, in old money, what used to be the, um, the packet gateway, GGSN. And of course, everything has now changed, but it's kind of the same. What is missing from this diagram is a lot of the legacy components we still have to support. I started my career 28 years ago doing IN and voice, fixed line, and that evolved to mobile. So this concept of separation of control plane to user plane, I'm familiar with that. And there's lots of angles and aspects from the previous generations that still need to be supported in this world. So even though we have 5G core, there's things that are missing, like the voice support, things like SIGTRAN, and other aspects like charging for messaging and those sort of things. So this is the challenge we have. So when we took the existing online charging system and containerized it, we ended up with this. This is a simplification, of course, it's very much complex, but this gives an indication of how complex the problem is. We're not talking about one CNF, we're talking about taking many parts of the system um, and uh, having to put it into our own cluster. And this is an ongoing activity. Um, to the left, we have the networks, we have the support. So even though we're moving into 5G, we still have the support voice and going back a few generations, the 3G and circuit. And that, of course, means SIGTRAN, CAP, and CAMEL. We have a talk to the OSS and BSS systems. And it's interesting, being here in the charging world, where do we sit? Because we have to work with the network side, and we have to work with OSS, BSS. And these two domains have, can have very different requirements in the cloud and cloud native and an assortment of other systems like billing, payment gateways, 
and the things that typically come with a complete charging and billing system for telco. And we do find occasionally, you know, it's an afterthought. Companies build up their um, operators build up their 5G core, they get the data working, the voice working, and then they have to bring in charging. And we speak with all these different types, and that's our challenge. As we know, if we spoken about before, we are in telco, so we have a list of these requirements we absolutely must adhere to. We have high availability. We talk about the five nines, but that's taken very seriously. No downtime. We have years and years of legacy requirements that each generation we have to pull along with us. Lots of business rules in the OSS systems, a lot of networking, a lot of interworking. This all has to be accommodated as we move to the next generation of telco. It's 5G. It's highly regulated. That's already been mentioned. You know, where we put data, how we treat data, in charging, it's monetization, even more regulation on top of what we already have in telco. So that presents a significant challenge to us as well. Um, standards based, we have to adhere to the standards. Um, sometimes in the other world's web scale, for example, you can invent your own things. You absolutely must adhere to these standards, which we have to keep taking forward with us. And yeah, it straddles IT and networks which have different cloud requirements. And we could almost sometimes be in deployments where the networks are in one type of public cloud and the IT and OSS systems are in different other public clouds. So this is the challenge we have when dealing with charging systems. I mean, out of interest, who here would say they're in networks? Would you want to raise your hand? You're in networks, yeah. Anybody else in the IT space? You want to raise your hand? Yeah, OK, so we have a mixture of people to kind of understand the different domains we're playing in. So approaches to cloud native. Again, we deal with lots of operators, and there are lots of different approaches. And never do we see like a big bang approach, let's go 5G. Um, it's a bit like doing brain some surgery on somebody running a marathon, right? Your operator's moving, they have a um, you know, high performance, high transaction network, which must be highly available, and you need to migrate it into this new world as you go. And you cannot do a big bang approach. You've got to take the pieces and move them along, which presents a significant challenge to moving the cloud native. Um, so it's usually a, a gradual migration. And we've seen hybrid approaches where in that diagram, you saw that the networks, the 5G SBA, well, that started off in cloud native because of the nature of it with the REST interfaces, but some of the legacy stuff stays on bare metal in the, and um, in the previous approach. You end up with a kind of a hybrid architecture, which is gradually moving to pure cloud native. Um, one approach, another project, build a green field and migrate all the data across don't really see that because it's all gradual migration. Um, or have one aspect of the solution on bare metal and have another aspect in different domains in cloud native. And we see all these approaches across the operators. There's no right or wrong one, but they do present a challenge to us as we're trying to move the solution between 4G to 5G and adopt the kind of 5G cloud native approaches. So decisions that have to be made, how quickly do you move to cloud? You know, we're at KubeCon, cloud native, we want to move there straight away. But we know we're in telco, um, it does take time to move there. Why, why are we going to cloud in the first place? Well, we know in telecoms, um, innovation can be slow. So we want to be able to adopt the kind of the CRCD approaches, rapid upgrades, not those six month year um, installation projects, as somebody said earlier, let, do the upgrades, install it, leave it there for a couple of years, come back again, right? The reason we're doing this is we want to move to a more rapid um, upgrade approach and so we can be, introduce more innovation into the services quickly. And things like data, where do we put the data on-prem and on-cloud? 
again, these are things that prevent us moving as fast as we would want to, more quickly. So, as I said, we've got challenges on the telco side of things, the traditional telco. I don't know how many people are here are familiar with like CAT protocol with Sigtran. Um, SCTP has been mentioned earlier on and the issues around that. Um, this is a big issue. Uh, in the online charging system, we'd like to think we're just dealing with data and everybody's going to move to WhatsApp for voice calls and these sort of things. That isn't going to happen. Um, across the world and all the operators, most people are still on voice. A big number in telco is still in emerging markets where they support voice. And these protocol and the traditional aspect still have to be supported, but in cloud native. Um, SCTP in Kubernetes is getting there, but we can't say it's in every variant, in every public cloud that we come across. So this proposes a significant uh, challenge, but I say that's already been mentioned today. Um, it's been supported as service in 120, and it's getting more mature. But as we mentioned, we've got the multi-homing and multi-pathing issues with SCTP that have to be supported. And things like multiple CNIs and containers using tools like Mortis are being brought in, but they're still not there yet. So in my domain of moving traditional telco, this is one of the biggest challenges I see at the moment. And we still have to kind of go forward cautiously, look at every use case, and see how we're going to implement it. And say, it's work that still has to be done. Um, does anybody come across this problem themselves at the moment? SCTP and, yeah, OK, yeah. Yeah, so we know all about it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is the work we have to be doing, right? We have to be, as a telco group in cloud native, in Kubernetes, I think we have to be championing this ourselves. Make sure this gets done. The other big issue in telecoms is state. And this is where the pure cloud native people start chucking things at me because, you know, we want everything to be stateless. But realistically, when you step back into the legacy world of telco, there's a lot of state in there. And that point's already been highlighted, I think, by Michael this morning that, you know, if you have a lot of a system with lots of components, microservices like I put up earlier, and you want to upgrade one, then you've got these dependencies because you have state throughout the system. Um, if you're doing voice calls, voice calls have state. The voice calls are associated with a charging session. That's two sessions you have in the system. The voice cap, the charging reservations that you typically have, and then you start having the state in the system. Um, this needs addressing. What do we do with it? Where do we store it? And yeah, it's a big challenge that we need to sort out in cloud native. But I think we're sort of we're working on it. It will hinder our advancement. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's work that has to be done. Now, an interesting thing we did, we did develop a pure um, CNF. So this is, this is kind of like a brand new component that was developed as a pure CNF. And that, ironically, is a charging bridge to help us migrate from the old world into the new world. So as I said, typically, um, when you build your 5G core, sometimes you find components left behind. And this can be the OCS. So you have a 4G OCS, which still supports diameter and then suddenly it's not compatible with your 5G core. So a product we developed was a, what we call a charging bridge made of a couple of microservices. You have one microservice acting as the SBA REST interface into the 5G core. You then have a diameter client up into your OCS. But interestingly, this was a good um, way of, of build, building a, a pure CNF and then being able to engage with a conformity suite which we'll talk about a bit later, and it's already been discussed today. And here at Matrix, we've played a big part in the, the um, conformity suite because we had a pure CNF we were able to start from. Um, 
So where does the charging bridge sit in the picture? Well, based on my previous diagram, you have the 5G core, you then have your legacy OCS in the 4G domain. That would typically speak, well, they always speak diameter, but you want your diameter speaking OCS to communicate with your 5G SMS. So you need a function in the bridge. And I'm certain this probably isn't the only bridging function you're going to need as you migrate from 4G environments into 5G. Um, but it's a good example. But what it does mean is you can build something that is purely um, cloud native. It doesn't have states. It's, it's maintaining between the SMF and 5G and the diameter-based OCS. And in its simplest form, it looks like this. So you have your 5G SMS function, talking your N40 SMF interface in the S SBA. It goes through whatever your service mesh into diameter clients, talking to your OCS. And uh, this was able to be developed as a pure CNF, which was able to be compliant with the test suites. And we use this as a way of taking the cloud native telco test suite, running the tests against it, and uh, develop the, working with the team to develop the conformity test suite. So we end up with the conformity test suite. So if you're not familiar with it, it's a project that's been running. Um, it's a set of auto-testing scripts, it, and it adopts all the principles of cloud native function. Um, so to demonstrate conformancy, implementation of best practices. It does mean if somebody wants to develop a, a telco cloud native function, they can get this test suite out of GitHub, and they've got kind of a, something to build against. It gives them a sort of a framework to try it. So anybody out there that is working on a cloud native uh, um, CNF, try running these tests against it. You know, it checks your Helm charts, persistent storage, liveness probes, those sort of things. And you can build it into your pipeline. And this has been quite a um, fruitful exercise because it means you've got a kind of a reference point. You can work between organizations and it's a point where you can agree on how these CNFs are gonna look like. And if you have an agreement on what they're gonna look like, then you can have a way of putting them into your pipelines and a standard structure of using them. So it becomes quite effective. So what lessons have we learned? Well, the first one is this is an evolutionary process. Um, there is no big bang to 5G cloud native. We have so much legacy in there that we have to kind of keep evolving and you will end up with a kind of a Frankenstein looking um, installation where you will have some components as cloud native functions, some maybe sit on bare metal as you pull them through, particularly in the kind of the signaling side, the networking SCTP. And as sort of Kubernetes and the ecosystem catches up, eventually you'll be able to replace everything. And yeah, we're waiting for Kubernetes to approach maturity for telco. And that's us, we're working on that, and we're pulling it forward and keep working on it. Another one, it's already been mentioned, is the um, logging, observability, and telemetry. And uh, yeah, we are dealing with very complex systems, and we want to better see what's going on in them. Like a, like a typical voice call, you've got, got a cat protocol coming in, it then sends You've got a kind of, um, it goes with the charging, things are set up, you've got rating going on. You want to better see that end to end. And in telecoms, that's a key thing. Um, telco has been very good at building systems that sh have good observability all the way through. And we need that kind of similar um, setup going forward in cloud native. So, it's something else we need to continue, keep working on. We're going to find that there's components that we're going to need to develop ourselves 
as part of the open source community for Telco. I think today we probably identified them when you start building something for real and you hit a, a gap or something you think, well, this isn't quite working as we want it to work. We're going to have to work on developing these things and pushing the community to, uh, to build them for us or work together to build them. Um, and uh, yeah, test automation, again, that's already been mentioned in your pipelines, I think is, increase, is key to getting that cadence. You know, we're moving to 5G for a reason. That reason is we want to put things in the cloud. We want to increase the rate that we can do upgrades, installations, and that enables quicker innovation. And coming back to that sort of six months installation upgrade project, it takes so much effort, we then have to leave it a couple of years, come back to it. That hinders innovation. We want something where we have a CI CD pipeline, the components are rapidly changing. When we have those bugs we want fixing, we want to better fix them quickly. And that will move the industry along quickly with innovation. So, yes, building common sets of tests that work across all the CNFs will increase cadence as we're moving along. So what's the road ahead? Well, yeah, we've got to fill these gaps required by traditional telco if we're going to move everything into cloud native. Right? Um, things like the protocols, SCTP, that's a bit of an anchor for us at the moment. It's dragging us. We need the support of them, but it's going to stop us going pure cloud native. We need to gain trust to move to CACD models. Right. I guess we're a mix of operators and vendors. We've got to develop trust where we can have that rapid upgrades, where the CNFs get pushed out, go into automatic testing, and then get deployed. You know, we've got to all work together to develop that system so we do get that increased rate of, of change and upgrades, which is you know, the biggest problem in the industry. How long is it going to take to get us to 5G at the current rate? Because all the work that has to be done. And the final point really, yeah, enhance the test suite further and increase adoption. Because if we have a common reference point, a common test, a set of tests that we can use to bring into our environments, then that will increase the rate at which things happen. So plenty of work to be done. And uh, yeah, let's make it happen. It's collaboration, that's why we're here. We shared the ideas today, lots of good ideas, and lots of areas where we need to be doing more work. So, any questions? Um, hi, yeah, uh, thanks for the talk. Hi, yeah. Very interesting. Um, I have a question regarding, you mentioned like voice, for example, and how that's been kind of cannibalized from, you know, Viber, WhatsApp, yep. like even, yep. and um, charging is one of those components that sits very close to the product. Yeah. And then also you mentioned there in the end regarding the, um, how do we, you know, get that buy-in, how do we accelerate the adoption yeah. of this cloud yeah. technology? I mean, putting all that together, do you, do you not see that one of the missing components here is that the business needs to see that the end customer isn't just the consumer with the SIM cards, the plans and everything, that is actually like the public cloud is the developer. And that, that servicing into over the top offerings like WhatsApp, if you could sell in an IMS solution, that you could build in carrier grade voice in these over the, the top uh, offerings. And then from a charging perspective, you can you know, model those technical products towards developers. And that's only available because, or enables the operator because if they're built on cloud native technology, that they can actually do this. You know, do, do you not think that there's something there? Yeah, I, I do absolutely, right. No, yeah, because the whole point of cloud native is it's not just about building a 5G core. It's having a cloud that you can put other things into. Yeah. And once you've got in, th you build up the trust and you increase the performance and reduce latency, right? Because everything's bound together. Um, Telco doesn't like anybody just going into their um, networks and changing things. Yeah. And there's, a, there's quite a significant DMZ between the telcos 
and their charging systems, and they're over the top. And at the moment, it's a gap this big. Yeah. I mean, and yes, we, we're, we're in online charging, absolutely, right? We, we want to bring in the, um, the, the WhatsApps and the Netflixes and be able to charge combined into your um, telco plan. Yeah. At the moment, yeah, telco is just charging um, data. It should be in that micropayment space, working with these over the top. And I, I completely agree with you um, because, you know, Telco keep their, their, their stuff in their, um, their silos, in their bunkers, it's their machines. Yeah. And you've been nowhere, you can't get anywhere near it, yeah. right? A third party cannot get the, in, the APIs into that Telco space. Yeah. This, however, a cloud native. I mean, there is a um, network exposure NES. element yeah. in the 5G core that can be used to open up to third parties like WhatsApp and over, over the top. And we can do that with charging as well. Yeah. And absolutely, that's what we're doing, right? In this room, yeah, it shouldn't be just telco people. It should be those guys as well. Yeah, because we need them on our side, you know? Oh, we do, we, otherwise you know, they steal our lunch, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because, I mean, they've got uh, no more, let's say, horses anymore beyond the SIM card, the plastic, piece of plastic, the plan and everything. Yeah. If they know that you can enable developers through building on cloud native technologies, and that becomes an offering, a technical offering, then they would pull the, te the network people into saying, hey, we need this, you know? And, and so the monetization I'm talking about, you know? Yeah, I understand, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, I totally, totally agree. Monetization of telco and yeah. monetization of everything else is too separate. Yeah. Because the, uh, the telcos don't give access to these other third parties to use those uh, monetization systems. Yeah. yeah. Right. Now, what you want is a kind of Apple relationship, right? Where Apple provides the third parties with the charging platform. Yeah. And uh, Telco should do that. To a certain extent, yeah. But, but anyways, you know, just to wrap up, like, I'd love if there's some critical conversation with, you know, the group that CNCF has kind of developed in this cloud native thing, because what's missing there is the developer and the developer that has that relationship with the consumer, you know, which is kind of eaten away from the operators, because right now operators just have infrastructure and the brand. And that's it. Yeah. They're just the pipes which are getting cannibalized, but are not monetizing on top of that cannibalization, you know? And I'm wondering I mean, how we can service back into them with the I tools. do know what I think the answer is. Okay. I mean, I, I've been in Telco 28 years, yeah. right? And I've been in research and R&D. And everybody comes up with these services, but nobody thinks, how do I monetize that service? Yes. If we had monetization at the beginning of the process and give the developer the access to the monetization platform while they build the service, that would happen. Yeah, yeah true. But we don't have the, we just don't have the structure or the APIs to yeah. be able to do that. Yeah, yeah. As you say, it's not in the developer mindset. Yes. If somebody goes out and builds the next WhatsApp, they're not yeah. thinking, how do I charge for this from day one? Exactly, yeah. I mean, you can ask all yourselves a question. Anyone here from the GSMA? Anyone? You? I don't so we're not making an impact, and <laughs> that's what I just wanted to... So that's the thing, if, if we enable the GSMA, for example, to take ownership on this, then we're, we'll be winning the, the kind of, let's say, the telco onboarding on this, you know? Because, uh, so, but yeah, thanks very much for your open, I don't want to tune longer, but if anyone wants to continue the conversation, I'm more than happy to, to share my views on it. And learn yeah, well, it's something we should be considering, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, the dream of putting this in the cloud, absolutely, is so you can have everybody else building on top of it. Yeah. But we have to build it first and make it available. Yes. Um, I'm not sure, yeah, in that third party app development space, who's even aware of 5G, the 5G core, and what's available to them? Yeah. Um, it, it's us in Telco with our 5G core. It's those people over the top building their th stuff. Yeah. Right, we want to combine both. Yeah, okay, cool. Thank you. Great, thank you.